Hello there fellow humans and welcome to this video and today I'm going to rate every single T10 tank in World Tanks Blitz. I've done this before I think in like December 2019 but that's a long time ago and since then there's been a lot of changes and a lot of new tanks so I've decided to do it again. So yeah here's all the T10s from Blitz. I'm gonna use the World Tanks PC thing here because it's easier. And uh, yeah if you enjoyed the video don't forget to like and subscribe and let's get into it with the number one, that is the Sheridan. Now, I'm going to put this in good, quite simple. It is a decent all-round light tank. However, if you're a new player, you're not going to do any good in it because it's a light tank, it forgives no mistakes. It has a lot of potential for good players, but it's not anything OP, nowhere near it in any case. So, yeah, it's, it's good, but that's about it. Then we have the M48 and the M60. Both are uh, two of the worst performing tier 10s in the game, and they don't really have any outstanding characteristics. You know, there's other medium tanks that are better at what they're doing, so I'm gonna put them into meh, um, because they could be better. You can play them well, but there is just better options out there. Then, the 57 Heavy. That is gonna go into the good section, because just like the Sheridan, it has a lot of potential if you know what you're doing, but if you're an average or below average player, you're gonna absolutely struggle with it. But nonetheless, it is a very good tank and definitely worth picking up uh, once you go towards your 10th, 15th T10 then. Um, now, then, obviously, the next one, the T125, it goes into great. It has everything. Um, armor, mobility, gun, gun depression, everything. It is just the perfect tank because it has everything and that is amazing. Then the T124, which is basically the opposite of the E3, it has nothing. It has no armor, no mobility. And no gun depression, like, it has alpha damage and penetration, and that's about it. And one-trick ponies generally are quite bad if it isn't anything outstanding. In this case, it is nothing outstanding. It is just bad. Then, we have the Timothy 3 which goes into the good section. It is a very, very good vehicle. Um, has amazing armor. Surprisingly a lot of speed for some reason. Um, and also a very, very good gun, like the E4, but... I like the E4, it actually has armor, and um, it's actually useful, so it goes up there in good. Then the T95 E6, it goes into the mech category, it's a hull of the Chieftain Mark VI with a gun of the E5, basically less DPM and less armor than both of them. So yeah, it's, it's just meh, not good. Then the Grill 15, I would put it in the decent section, um, simply because... It doesn't have quite as much potential as, as a 57 or a Sheridan because you're more limited by the horrible traverse speed and uh, the quite high size of the vehicle because it gets spotted easy. So, however, if you're a good player, you can make this thing work perfectly. If you're not, hands off it. It's a good tank. I play it like a light tank, basically. Um, but it is a very, very hard tank to actually pull off. Well, then um, the VK90, it goes into the great section because it is basically just like the E5. It has armor, it has mobility, it has a good gun, it has a perfect balance of everything. It has a turret at the back, so you have to watch out for that a bit. Um, but then again, if you know what you're doing a bit, then you're going to do perfect in this tank. So, yeah. And... Unlike that, you have the mouse, which goes into the mess section because it has less armor, worse gun, and worse mobility than the VK90, and overall isn't that good. It does have some potential, sure, but you're never gonna do as well in it as in a grill or in any of the other vehicles that are already there because it's just slow. You rely on your team. If your team's dead, um, you can't do anything because you can't move, you can't reposition, um, and you can't kill anyone because you have 2.3k DPM. So, I mean, you have armor, but you need a team to make it work, because obviously if you have two Object 140s or 62As on your side, you're going to be useless. So, mouse goes into the mess section. It's just not that good. Then, the E100 goes into decent. It's a bit more mobile. It has the 640 alpha damage. It has more DPM than the mouse, so that's quite good, I'd say. But not as good as... It would be required to actually go into the good section, so it stays in decent, and that's where it belongs. Then we have the E50M, and that is a tough decision here. Does it go in great or good? Now, let's put it into good, because it does lack 
what it used to have. It had the best penetration in one day. Uh, Wargaming decided to kill it, and now the gun is not as good as, as it could be. So I'm gonna put it in good. However, it has an amazing amount of potential. It gives a lot of mistakes as well. It is a great tank to pick up if you're a beginner. However, the E50 stock is pain. Um, but yeah, this was also my first tier 10. And uh, I would definitely recommend it. If you're looking for a solid medium tank that is easy to play, go for the E50M. That is a very good choice there. Then um, the Yeguru. Well, I mean, it's a one trick pony. It goes down there without saying anything. Um, then the Leopard. I would put the Leopard into the decent category. Quite simply because it is just like the other German tanks here. It has some potential, but not as much as, as others, for example. Because the Sheridan compared to the Leopard, it has more boom, it is easier to play because you have to peak less um, and it's therefore more usable, I'd say, this. that's why the Sheridan is above the Leopard. However, Leopard, insane accuracy, insane DPM, it's basically a light tank with a very good gun, so yeah, don't don't camp in it though, it's, it's not a camper tank. Anyway, then the VK-72, <laughs> you know where that goes. I don't, I don't think there is any discussion about where that tank goes now. It has no armor, no mobility, and no DPM, so hello. And then the 263, uh, same scenario there. If it will be the Bobject, it would go up here, but it's a 263, so it goes into the no section. Quite simply because, I mean, like, you can pen it everywhere. Um, it's very, very hard to play. It's very situational, and it's not really that good in any way, really. And it's, it's very rare as well, so, I mean, it's just not good. Really. Then, uh, we have the RS7, that goes into the mech section. It used to be good, one day, like the mouse. Um, it used to be good, but now it's just, I mean, like, it can't do anything anymore. It doesn't have the best of anything. It's it's average, if anything. And at that, it's not even good. And then we have the RS4. Um, I'm gonna put it in good. A lot of people are gonna get mad at this, but why is he not great? Well, it's quite simple. Does it have a lot of gun depression? No. Does it have good mobility? No. Does it have good DPM? No. That's three no's right there. How is it great with, with that? You know, sure, it has good armor and the, the good heat pen, but then again, you want to be both effective at attacking and defending. And the E5 is a lot better at doing that, because it has more gun depression, it's more versatile, it has more DPM, it can fight mediums off a lot better, and um, it has more mobility, so it can reposition a lot easier. So, Ice 4, very good tank, also recommended, not recommended, stock ST1, um, but yeah, it, it does deserve a spot in the upper section of this list, but it's just not, not versatile enough to get into great. Then we have the T62 and the T22 medium, both of those go into great. Well, because basically they are versatile, they have armor, mobility, gun, everything. Just lack gun depression, that's a sad part, but you don't really need that, it's a Russian medium tank, they're designed for brawling. And that's what they're perfect at. So, they definitely deserve that spot in the great section up there. Then next, the Object 140, I mean, if you compare it to the others, it sort of goes in a line with the M60 and the M48, so it goes into the mess section. And then we got the 268, and where do we put it? Do we put it in the same line as the E3, or do we put it above it? Hmm. Hmm. I would say, let's put it into good as well. Because obviously it doesn't have a turret. Um, it does have a better mobility than the E3, and has worse armor, so... Yeah, I mean, these two are very much in the race for uh, best uh, T10 tank destroyer, really. Then, uh, we move on to the British with the Vickers Light, and, uh, well, I mean, represented by the Manticore. And that one goes into decent, because it's basically a Leopard with a bit worse gun and a bit more armor, so, I mean, yeah, it, it goes there. So, yeah, then, FV215B183. Well, well, well. It goes here. That's where it goes, and that's the end of it. Then we have the FE 215B. Um, it is very good. It doesn't really deserve a great spot, you know. It's it lacks um, armor in, in that uh, regard, and also lack gun depression. But it is a very great tank. The gun is insanely good. So yeah, it deserves a spot up here. And it is very very hard to play. 
not gonna lie, it is very hard to play. But if you know how to do it, it is perfect, really. Then, moving on, the FV 4005, I would put it into the decent section, you know. I, I, might, I might as well also put it in meh, but the thing is, um, it has an amazing gun, the autoloader works really well. If you know how to play it, if you don't know how to play it, just stay away from it, really. Um, the line is pretty good, the tank, I mean, you have to know what to do with it, but if you know how to do with it, you can put out a lot of damage, and it can work quite decently, I'd say, so there is that. Then FE4202 goes into meh, without a doubt, because M48 and M60, again, very similar to those two, with the one difference that it has hash, so you can make it work on a different level with the hash, but still, there are plenty of better tanks out there. And then we have the Super Conqueror, um, which I personally don't own, so I can't tell anything about it. So I'm just going to put it in good and leave it at that, because I don't think it's really great, but it certainly does get there up on the, on the list. And the Badger, well, I mean, <laughs> you know where that one goes. Then, the Chieftain. Well, I mean, I, I probably should have to, to make an extra spot on the list up here for the Chieftain. Because this thing is just, like, it is the perfection of a tank. It is the E5 in even more perfect. It has hash, so it has even better penetration. It has even more gun depression than the E5. It has even more mobility. It has even more DPM. It does have less armor, yes. But if you know how to play it, then you're going to be a god on the battlefield in the Chieftain Mark VI. Because it is an absolutely wonderful tank. And you're never gonna go wrong with that, if you have it. And it also makes you crits, so, like, literally, the Chieftain Mark VI is perfect in any way. Then, uh, we move on to the uh, Hori, and, I mean, yeah, represented by the Type 5 here. Um, I'm gonna put it into good, well, I mean, it doesn't deserve great, certainly not. Um, it might also go in decent, I mean... A lot of people say it's OP because it has, like, the, the 380 premium AP, but, hey, it's not a smasher. It is not a smasher. It can't one-shot enemies. You know, it's it's not anything special. It doesn't have good armor. It doesn't have that much mobility. The gun traverse is awful. So, I mean, like, no. Like, just, just no. It is pretty good, yeah, but it's not better than that in any way. Um, and there. Then, uh, the STB-1, which goes into great, obviously, uh, because it is quite harder to do play than the E50M, gotta say that, but it has more potential than the E50M, certainly. So, yeah, it is. It is great. It is, indeed, very great. Then, we have the 113, and um, I don't know. It has a great gun, however... So it kind of would have to go in good here. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in decent simply because you have better options than it. For example, um, the RS4 and the 215B are just a tad bit better than it. So I would put in decent here. It's sort of a, a middle thing here, I guess. There. Then uh, the 5A, I mean, I guess I'll, I'll put it in decent as well. I still hate it. I'm doing 3k average damage with it. It's still not a good tank, but I mean... It's playable if you know what you're doing. It's, I still don't like it, but whatever. Might also put it in meh together with the IS-7, because it's basically just the same as the IS-7. So, while the 113 is, is a middle thing between good and decent, the 5A is more of a middle thing between decent and meh. But I'm going to leave both in the same line to not separate them, uh, so they don't get sad. And then we move on uh, to more Chinese tanks, and uh, it is the 121. Which, I would say, also goes in decent, you know, it's not as good as an E50M, but it is also quite capable. It has 420 alpha damage, which is nice. So, yeah, I mean, what is there much to say about it? It doesn't have a lot of gun depression, however, so that kind of holds it back from, from going up here with stuff like the 62A and the T22. It is, it is like the 113, it's a middle thing between good and decent, sort of. Should, probably should have made more tiers, but that's alright. 
I guess. Then the 1 to 1B, I mean, yeah, I, I would put it in the mesh section with pretty much all the other mediums here um, in there. Because, I mean, <laughs> it's already known that Wargaming hates mediums at this point. Um, because the worst performing tanks in the game are tier 8 medium tanks. And the tier 10s aren't really doing that amazingly either. So 1 to 1B goes into the mesh section. It's not as good as the 1 to 1, so it is definitely going down there. Then, the uh, China box. Hmm. Well, I mean, it's a copy of the 268, so I'm, I'm gonna put it in good and leave it there. Then, AMX 50B. It is better than the T57 Heavy, simply because it's more versatile, it has more mobility, it is uh, more usable. However, I mean, it has worse armor for that, side armor, I mean, but then again, you can still HE the side of the 57's turret, so... Armor-wise, they're pretty much equal, and uh, gun-wise, it's the same as well. Uh, the, the 57 has a slightly better uh, unload speed, but that doesn't really matter too much. It's only 0.5 seconds, so I would put the 50B in great because it has amazing mobility. It has amazing potential as well, um, and you're going to do well with it um, in pretty much any situation that you put it in, unless you're not loaded. Then, obviously, you have your problem. And then, um, the bat chat. Um... I've been always criticizing this tank a lot, um, so the thing is, I'm going to put it in meh with pretty much all the other medium tanks here, because that's where it sort of deserves a spot. Um, it's not that good anymore. It could be a lot better. Like, why don't they just buff the alpha damage to 350? It's now, it's just a TVP with one shell less. I don't understand that. So... Yeah, just buff the alpha to 350, and then, then it would go up here in decent, certainly. The Fosh, well, it goes up here with all the other TDs, basically. With um, the E3, the Object, the WZ, and the the Fosh. Those are... and the, the Hori as well. They're kind of on the same level. They're all good, I guess. Um, so that's, that's all right there. And, uh, yeah. I mean, it's sad that I have to put all these mediums down here, but they're just not that good, you know? That they're just it's disappointing to having to do that, but it's just I mean it's sad. What is also very sad is the MX D B, which goes into the no section. Like bruh, what the fuck is that thing? Um it is an STB but worse at basically everything. So um I'm gonna put it in the no section because it is a premium tank, so you're gonna have to spend actual money on this pile of shit. So just just no. Just don't don't even bother getting it. Just just don't. Um, and then we have the MX M four fifty four, and that goes into the good section, I guess. It's not deserving of a spot in great, um, but it goes sort of between good and great. That's where I would put it. But I'm gonna put it in good here because, quite simply, it lacks side armor. It's so big. Like big is always bad. You get penetrated very easily. And you don't have the advantage that the 50B has of the clip. You don't really have that. Um, you only have a one shotgun. Like, it's a very, very good tank. But it's just not great. I would say. And then, the Kronvong. I mean, I'm kind of struggling with tank this tank a lot. I'm struggling with it a lot. Not in the, the statistical sense, but in the moral sense. Because I'm doing about 3,000 average damage in that thing without trying, so that's pretty good. But then again, the tank itself is horrible. You have bad armor, and um, bad DPM rather, and bad mobility, and you have great armor. So, it has like, not a lot. It has great gun depression though, it has an auto reloader, but the problem is it's very situational, you know? You can't really just kill everyone really, because you only have 2000 DPM. Which means that you're relying on a team, you're relying on a team to hold you, um, and, um, because if you don't have a team, what are you gonna do? Everyone can out-DPM you, everyone can out-shoot you, uh, so, like, I don't know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in decent, I guess, uh, because of that, you know, it is, it's very situational, it can be insanely good, and it can also be absolutely horrible, so I'm gonna just put it into the decent section right here. Then, we have two left, and we're starting off with the TVP. Huh, well, I mean, I was kind of excited for this tank, 
And uh, comparing it to Tier 9, it's kind of disappointing, really, if you compare it to the Skoda T50. So I'm going to put it into the meh section. It's sort of a middle thing between decent and meh. Yeah, I should have definitely made more tiers, but I'm not going to redo it. Um, uh, but yeah, it's a middle thing here. Um, it is better than the bat chat, but only slightly. So I guess it, it does belong there. And then the last one, it is the Predator 65. Has a nice auto reloader with three shells. Um, it's basically the reverse Kronvang, where it trades the armor for relatively good gun and good mobility. So it is decent. So yeah, that is my list, as you can see. And uh, if you agree with it, then nice. If you don't agree with it, then, well, I, I don't know. Congratulations. Um, and also, congratulations that you made it till here. So that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next one. Goodbye.